All right, guys, BLM here, back with a new video, this time back with a new casting video. And this is a video idea that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I just always thought this was a pretty fun idea, not a realistic idea. I don't think this type of season's ever happening within Survivor, but it's still a fun one to talk about. So here we're going to be casting Survivor Battle of the Seasons. Now, with this casting series, I typically try to go for a semi-realistic cast, a cast I feel like production would put together. And I mean, I'm still going to be doing that here, but I'm definitely going to be taking a lot more liberties here because like, again, I just don't think this is a thing that will ever happen. Now, Battle of the Seasons is a concept that people have been talking about. Oh, like what if we had like Kageon versus David versus Goliath? Like I think just on a basic level, I, I do think this is like an interesting idea, though I feel like that sort of Battle of the Seasons will never happen. Like it's something that's so unrealistic in the sense that there's no way production's bringing back half of a cast to be back on a season, especially considering how much coordination that would take, how much of a hassle it would be. I mean, like even with the challenge which did do a Battle of the Seasons season with four people from a real world season. Even they struggled to get four people to the point where there are teams on that season that don't make much sense. And I feel like Survivor would have that same issue. So that's when I thought like, okay, what if we divide it into more seasons? What if we did four tribes, five people from each season? I feel like that's a lot more playable. It's still difficult. But I do feel like that is something that I could see production doing. The problem became at that point is how to balance the tribes. And it became very tough to balance the tribes. Because also at that point, each tribe has an imbalanced number of people of each sex. And that just really messes with things too. So I said, you know what, screw it. This, again, this is never happening anyway. Let's go with four tribes of six. That way we have three men, three women from each season. And that makes the balancing of everything a lot easier. Now... It's still not perfect. It's still something that I don't see production ever doing, largely due to just how much of a hassle it would be. I mean, at this point, like, why not just do an old school versus new school season? I, I feel like that is the more appropriate theme than doing a Battle of the Seasons. Or if you were to do, like, Battle of the Seasons with just all recent seasons, then at that point, why not just do a more general all-star season that's easier to cast? Like, I, I don't see a reason why they would do Battle of the Seasons, but it is a very fun idea in my mind. So the way that we're going to be running through this video, we are going to be going through every season of Survivor and talking about who I think could be back from those seasons if they were to do a battle of the seasons type of season and then eventually talk about the seasons I did end up selecting. So let's start off with Survivor Borneo. And Borneo, I came up with five people that I think could be a somewhat likely returning group. I really wanted to try to squeeze Borneo in there because Borneo is obviously the first season of the show and it would just be really fitting for a battle of the season season to have the first season of the show on it i just couldn't squeeze them in though again like once i bumped into six people at that point i just can't realistically see six people from borneo coming back even the five i think would be tough again because that includes w kelly wigglesworth probably not happening i do think you can get jervis i think you can get jenna Gretchen is a maybe. Guess we can add in Joel Klug, but at that point, it's like I really feel like we're stretching it. So Borneo did not make the cut, even though I really wanted to try to squeeze them in there. Next up, we have the Australian Outback, and for me, there's just not enough returnees from this season. I mean, you obviously have the big three in Tina, Colby, Jerry, but I don't think you can get much outside of that, especially now that obviously Scoop and Varner have their issues. Even Kimmy has her issues. So it's like, who else are we getting from this season? I don't think there's enough people there. Next up is Survivor Africa. And again, I really considered Africa. Again, I think there's some pretty clear names here. I think you got Lex and Tom, who I think are both people who like aren't off the radar for production. Like, I don't think they're super likely returnees but i do think there are type of people that if survivor were to try to cast some old schoolers i do think they would be in consideration plus also i think you can get a t-bird i think you can get a kelly goldsmith again that's four people there again beyond that though it's tough it's like who else do you get ethan doesn't want to play again clarence doesn't want to play again Lindsay would be interesting but it's like do we need her it's like i don't feel like africa again is well-rounded enough there to fill out a cast because again like i feel like if production were to do this they would want no filler uh, again like for me if i were to put this cast i would still go for a season even though i have like maybe one or two filler people on there if i can get some other big names i feel like production would not want that filler so because of africa did not make the cut now marquesas again marquesas another one just couldn't get the people i think you got nalia maybe kathy you got sean you got john 
after that though again who do you get Boston Rob doesn't want to be back and even if he does it's like I feel like there's better seasons to associate him with Hunter Ellis I guess it's like but do we want Hunter Ellis back again for me it just weren't the people there so Marquesas didn't make it on next up Thailand <laughs> again come on now the Amazon um again not enough people I, I think you got Jenna if you can get Rob Sisson, you know, that's cool. I think you can get Dina beyond that. Again, I just don't feel like production has many people on their radar from this season. Not making the cut. Next up, we have Pearl Islands. And Pearl Islands is the first season that we're going to be talking about that was in serious contention for making this list. I think the problem here is finding the right balance. And that's a lot of the reason why Pearl Islands didn't make the cut. But again, there were people here. Again, you got Sandra. You got Krista, who I think is good enough for this sort of season. You can possibly get like a Dara, but again, I think feel like the women are kind of lacking here in terms of returning possibilities. Again, with the men, I, I think you have Savage, you have Rupert, you have Burton. I think that's three pretty solid ones there. You can even add in a Rhino if you really want to, but it's like, I don't feel like the women are strong enough in comparison to some of these other seasons to really make this season make the cut. So I had to cut Pearl Islands as well. And next up, we have Survivor All-Stars. And this is the thing. I really, really wanted old school representation on this season. But again, none of these casts were really fitting. With a Borneo, you can possibly get five people. With a Pearl Islands, you can possibly get five or six people. But I didn't feel like it was a solid enough group to fit this season. I do feel like obviously All-Stars, being the All-Stars, at that point, I feel like there's people here to put on. So I did select All-Stars as one of the four seasons to put on the cast here. The question was, who did I put on? So let's start off with the men. First up, I think one of the bigger locks for me was Rupert. I think Rupert is someone that pretty much defines this era of Survivor, like the Survivor 7 and 8 time period where again Rupert was just so popular at that point I feel like to not have Rupert on this tribe would be kind of a waste and I know people are annoyed by him but I do feel like he is a good fit here also I did put on Lex as I mentioned earlier with the Africa tribe I do feel like Lex is someone that is in consideration to bring back if you're going to bring back a whole bunch of old schoolers I feel like if it's Lex versus Tom I would rather see Lex back plus also I feel like Tom and Rupert are are kind of similar physically and again, we're trying to diversify the tribes a bit, so I decided to go with Lex over Big Tom. And the other guy I put on is, again, one of the bigger locks if we're going to do like an old school style tribe, and that is Colby. Again, I, I think Colby needed to be on here if we're doing an all-star tribe. And he's someone that has talked about wanting to come back, so I, I put Colby on. Along with Colby, now starting with the women, obviously, did also put Jerry on. I think Jerry has to be there if Colby's there. Again, I, I can't imagine a season where Colby's on there without Jerry and the same thing vice versa. I feel like they both need to be on, so put them on. Now, the other two women slots were a bit tougher because there were a couple of people that I really considered. I really considered Kathy, who is someone that I think was very innovative for a time, really great player at the time. But I do feel like now, modern day Kathy is like, is that someone we really need to see on Survivor. I think that's the bigger question mark for me. So I did not go with Kathy. I did not go with Tina either, who is someone I did really consider, but I did put on Jenna Lewis, who I've talked about in the past. I think Jenna Lewis is someone that would adapt to the modern game if she were to play again. I think she would be really interesting on return. So she made the all-star cast here. And also I picked the other Jenna in Jenna Maraska, who may have had her issues recently, but I do feel like to balance out this tribe, I think Jenna was someone that was needed, someone a bit younger than the rest of the other players. I'm the youngest person on this tribe. I did have some hesitancy with putting her on as she is a winner and she is the only winner on this tribe. And there was a point where I didn't have the all-star cast on here, mainly because I was hesitant about putting Jenna Maraska on, but at the end of the day, it's like I really wanted old school representation. So I said screw it and it put all stars on the cast. Now moving on to Vanuatu. And again, I think Vanuatu is tough in terms of the men. I, I feel like the women, there's a lot of strong contenders. You got Twyla, Eliza, Amy. I feel like that's a very solid core three. Men, I mean, you got Chris. I guess a Rory. I guess a Sarge. But it's like really at the end of the day, not making the cut. Palau, I mean, you got a couple people. You got Stephanie who I think does want to play again. Kobe wants to play again. I, I could see a Katie Gallagher doing it, but again, still not enough people. Tom doesn't want to do it. Ian doesn't want to do it. I think at that point, you kind of just drop this group from the cast anyway. And Guatemala. I think Guatemala is one that I really considered. Now, the problem with Guatemala is that it's Guatemala, and production clearly does not like this season. But if it had not been for that, I definitely would have deeply considered it. I mean, I think there's enough people here. I mean... Again, women, you have Danny, Stephanie, Cindy, Amy. I mean, that's four women there. Men, 
you got Judd, I guess you got Bobby John, you got Brian, you got some people, I mean, Rafe would be cool, but I don't think he wants to do it, so it's like, I think there could be a group put together there, but clearly production would not want that. Now from Panama, I really considered Panama as well, again, I think you got three solid women, you got Danielle, Suri, Courtney, men it becomes tougher because I think you got Terry and Shane, but I don't think you can get another one unless you were to want to stretch and get Bob Dog. Again, Aris doesn't want to play. That would be cool if you got Aris though, because that would be the entire final six. But it's like realistically, I don't see it happening. Now from Cook Islands, I think this one is pretty impossible to put together as well. I think Cook Islands has a lot of great men. Like you have Yule, Ozzy, Penner. If you can't get one of those, you got Nate. Women, you got Parvati and Candace, but I don't think you have anyone else unless you were to want to like bring back Becky. But it's like, really, I don't feel like there's many female candidates there and because that didn't put them on. Next up, we have Fiji. I think Fiji has pretty much no female candidates at all. I mean, maybe Michelle Yi if you really stretch it, but it's like, no. I mean, men, even then, like Yao Man doesn't want to come back. You do have Earl, but it's like, is that enough? I, I don't think Fiji makes the cut. I really, really consider China. I think China is one of those that I really, really consider China. China was a cast that made it pretty far into my considerations because I do think we have a pretty solid tribe here. Again, men, you have Todd, James, and again, the third one is kind of a stretch, but I think you can get like a frosty. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And for the women, I mean, you got three pretty big locks. You got Courtney, Amanda, PG. I think that would be a really great tribe. But I think there are some hesitancies here. Obviously, you got Todd, someone who it seems like they're just adverse to bringing back. Courtney is someone that I don't feel like she wants to play again. Amanda has said the same thing in the past, though. I think she's more willing now. But still, it's like I feel like there were enough hesitancies there. Plus, also, I just feel like it, once we see the full picture of the cast i don't feel like china really fits it so because that china did not make it on next up we have micronesia and i actually did put micronesia on the cast and if you can't see the picture that's being put together at this point essentially i do think the most realistic way to do battle of the seasons is by having those seasons be all-star seasons or be all-star adjacent seasons we will have one exception that we will talk about but I do think returning players is a necessary factor in a battle of the season season in a real life scenario as that does allow you to have a lot more options within the cast of people to bring back in terms of people that you know are going to be good TV and it allows for there to be pretty much no filler. Now, again, is this what I would ideally do in my perfect scenario for battle of the seasons no i would love it to be four newbie casts going against each other when we're looking at the real life scenario of how production would put this together i do feel like they would opt to go for returnee slash fans versus favorite-esque seasons and really for micronesia for me like it's such an easy group to put together it's so easy i, I think you got three women right away amanda Suri, natalie and amanda as i said someone that i think is willing to come back at this point Suri, one of the best players of all time would be great to see again. And then you have Natalie Bolton, someone that people have been wanting to see back for a while and has been consideration for a while, but never was able to be brought back. But here we go. Again, I did not put Parvati on mainly because I don't think Parvati wants to play again. But then for the men, again, you got Eric, you got Ozzy, you got Penner. I think it's super easy. And Eric, someone that production clearly loves in terms of the mistake that he made. And again, to have him on a Micronesia tribe with the people that pulled that move off against him. Again, with Amanda, Sri, and Ali, I think that'll be awesome. We have Ozzy because why not? <laughs> Whatever, I guess. I personally don't need to see Ozzy back, but I do feel like Ozzy's the most realistic pick here. And I feel like is someone that production would pick out of this field. And then we got Penner, who Penner's great, obviously. Really fantastic character. So for me, I felt like this group of six was very, very easy to put together. Next up, we got Gabon. Again, not enough contenders here. I think we got Kenny, Randy, and Corinne. I don't think we have much else. From Token Teens, I, I do feel like we could put a group together here if we really wanted to. Again, in terms of the men, I mean, you got JT, Steven, Coach, Tyson. I think that's four really solid contenders. Women, I mean, you got Aaron and Taj, but I think Taj doesn't want to play again. So it's like, I feel like at that point, that's what made it difficult enough to the point where I was like, you know what, let's just drop this. From Samoa, I mean, Samoa has some people. I mean, you got Russell Hans, obviously. You got like Dave Ball, John Fincher would be fun. Alora Moret return wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Monica Padilla is there. I mean, like, there's people to bring back, but definitely not a top contender of a cast here, so did not put them on. Next up, we got Heroes versus Villains, and this was tough because, as I said, I did put up some returnee casts on. 
And really, at the end of the day, it became All-Stars versus Heroes versus Villains. Which one do I put on? I went with All-Stars because, again, I want old-school representation here. And also, I do feel like there's a good chunk of people that are in contention for this season in, like, Jerry, Colby, Rupert, who are on that All-Star cast. Amanda and Sari are obviously already on the Micronesia cast. And then once we get rid of those, I mean, who's really left? Especially when we're, like, taking consideration who wants to come back. Because, like, obviously, like, a Parvati doesn't want to come back. I don't know about Courtney. I don't think Tom would want to or can come back. Especially for a season like this. Again, if it was Winners at War, I think that's a different thing. But for this season, probably not. So, again, we're really, like, narrowing down the field to, like, I mean, you can get Sandra. That's cool. Probably Coach possibly JT but it's like beyond that it's like I just don't feel like there's enough so did have the cut heroes versus villains next up we got Nicaragua again a few contenders again you got Fabio you got Marty you got Holly you got Brenda but not enough to make a folk tribe there from Redemption Island you got three solid women I I think you got Natalie Ashley Andrea you can even add in Stephanie Valencia I I feel like the women there are pretty good I think the problem is the men it's like who's there outside of I guess Mike Chisel, but it's like, are we really playing Mike Chisel on a modern Survivor season at this point? Because again, like Boston Rod doesn't want to come back. Philip doesn't want to come back. I mean, who cares about Grant? I mean, Steve, like, again, like these people aren't coming back. So no Redemption Island. South Pacific was one I really considered. I mean, before I did decide on Micronesia, I mean, we could have had Ozzy on here. Coach, Jim Rice would have been cool. Ozzy Cochran doesn't want to come back. But for the women, you got Sophie. I think Michaela wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. At that point, though, I think we're stretching. I mean, you can possibly get a Dawn. But again, I I just didn't feel like it fit the overall theme of the season. So did not put South Pacific on. Next up, we have One World where, again, One World, a lot of great women here. We got Kim, Sabrina, Chelsea, maybe Kat, maybe Monica Culpepper. A lot of great women. Again, the men really lacking. You got Troyzan, and even then, like, do we need Troyzan again? You got Jonas, but it's like, again, not enough to fill out the entire tribe. Next up, we have Philippines, and Philippines is a cast I really, really considered. Because again, I feel like there's a very solid group of six. I mean, you got Denise and Malcolm. I think those two are locks. You got Penner, again, before the Micronesia decision, you had Penner. You got Pete, who I think is a dark horse to return. The problem is that I feel like for the women field, you need Abby and RC. Because I don't think Lisa wants to come back. And like getting both Abby and RC, I think is very, very difficult. And we even saw that RC dropped out of contention for second chance because she knew Abby was going to be in the running. So I don't feel like this is a likely group to come together. So that's why they didn't make it on. Next up, we have Karamoan. And really, I just don't feel like Karamoan has a strong enough cast to really be in consideration here. I mean, a lot of the fans on the season are people that I just don't feel like production is super incentivized to bring back. Like, while I personally would like to see a Michael Snow or a Reynolds return, I don't think it's happening. Like, you do have, like, a Malcolm, an Andrea, possibly a Brenda, but it's like, I don't feel like there's enough people here that want to come back or production wants to see back to make them as an actual tribe. Next up, we have Blood versus Water, and Blood versus Water was very much a consideration for me. I feel like there's actually a lot of people here that could be in consideration. And for the men, you have like a Tyson, a Jervis, a Hayden, even a John Cody, a Brad Culpepper. Like, I feel like those people would have been consideration for men. Women, you got Monica Culpepper, you got Tina, Sierra, Laura Moret, Kat, even a Candace. But it's like, I feel like there's too much intermingling here. I feel like if you were to put a cast together, it's like we can't have Monica and Brad together. We can't have Sierra and Laura together. We can't have John and Candace together. I I feel like it's too much to have like two of these people on a six person tribe coming into the game. So that was a major reason why I didn't end up putting Blood vs. Water on. But Kageon, Kageon was a big consideration. I mean, Kageon, I really thought was going to make the cut for me coming into this. But again, when thinking about it a bit more, it's like, First off, I don't want Tony or Sarah on this cast. I feel like it's a waste for them to be on a Battle of the Seasons as cast. We have Cass and Spencer, two people who don't want to play again. And, like, once we're getting rid of those four, like, those are four of the biggest figures on this season. It's like, who do we have left? I mean, we have Wu, Trish, I mean, Tasha, I mean, LJ. I mean, like, come on. Like, Alexis. I mean, like, at that point, I think we're really stretching it. So while I would really like to see a Kageon tribe just from the idea of it being Kageon and that's my favorite season I just don't feel like it really fits the cast especially if we're going for a semi-realistic cast here now for San Juan del Sur again I think you have a similar issue to the original Blood vs. Water not as much though I mean you can't have John and Jacqueline both on so that's something but I, I think there's still enough people again you got Natalie Anderson if you go for Jacqueline over John 
and possibly get a Wentworth who doesn't really want to come back. I think you could get the women there. I think the men is a bit easier. I mean, you got Keith, you got Josh and Reed, you got Jeremy, but again, Jeremy doesn't want to play again either. So again, I think that's the main reason why San Juan del Sur didn't make the cut is mostly because like, I feel like the big names just don't want to play again. Now for Worlds Apart, and this is one that I did kind of try to put together, but I just don't think there's enough people there. Again, you got Mike and Carolyn. I think those two are locks. After that, though, it's like it's tough to find like someone that is extremely likely. Again, like Joe is like obviously very, very controversial figure within the community at this point. I wouldn't have him on my cast, but I just don't know how production feels. But even then, even if Joe was on, like it's not enough still. Like you would need to get someone like Shireen back, who I don't think she wants to play again. A Tyler back, but they didn't even like Tyler that much. A Max back, but I'm pretty sure they don't like Max anymore. So it's like, who are we getting here? I, I don't think there's enough people from Worlds Apart. Now from Cambodia, and again, like Cambodia All-Star season, there's a lot of All-Stars to bring back here. But again, it runs into the issue of a lot of these people just not wanting to come back. You got Jeremy Spencer Wentworth, three of the biggest names on this cast, not coming back. Joe is, again, questionable at this point cast doesn't want to come back so we're really like narrowing down the field to what like again tasha keith abby maria maybe a sierra easton but at this point we're not even getting a lot of the people that made the end game stretches of the season so at that point it's like again like what's the point so i decided to pass on cambodia next up we have ko rong ko rong was definitely in consideration and ko rong i think you got a lot of strong women here you got Michelle, Aubrey, Sydney, Julia, and Debbie. I think like five pretty solid picks. In terms of the men, I mean, you got Ty and Kyle Jason, who I would consider pretty big locks there. I think you can add in a Nick Myrano. And through that, I mean, you have the cast. Like, you can easily put that group together. I still did cut Ko Rong because at this point, a spoiler for the entire cast, we essentially have three returnee cast and one newbie cast. And I felt like the other newbie cast was a much stronger group of returnees than this was. And also kind of fit this idea that I wanted to have on the cast that we will talk about a bit later. Now from Legends Gen X, I mean, you got some pretty strong options here. You got Adam and Jay. I think those are two of the biggest locks for the men. I think beyond that, though, it becomes a lot tougher. I think you got to stretch to bring back like a Brett or a Will, considering both David and Zeke are probably two people that don't want to play again. For the women, I mean... I think you got Figgy, maybe a Michaela, maybe a Jessica Lewis. I just don't know how they feel about her. So again, I think we're stretching a bit with Millennials with Gen X, so I did cut them because of that. Now for Game Changers, and Game Changers actually has a good amount of contenders. However, the reason I did not put Game Changers on is just because of how much of a mix mash Game Changers feels as a season. Again, like with the original All-Stars, like you have this old school group that you can kind of bring together. They all have this like similarity there in them being all old school players like micronesia is filled with people who are prominent kind of in that middle era of survivor I mean, even like here's there's villains and cambodia like they have commonalities there on the cast like what is the commonality between these people and game changers like to me it just really feels weird to even consider a lot of these people to be on a tribe together like it just feels like a random grouping of all stars where it's like, I mean, yeah, we can put together a group of like a Brad, a Ty, a JT, a Malcolm, an Aubrey, a Sari, a Michaela, a Andrea. It's like, I mean, there is a group to be put together here. It just feels like a random grouping of all stars. So because that, I did not put game changers on the cast. Now moving on to HHH. And this is the thing about from HHH forward. If I really wanted to, this entire cast could just be modern seasons. I feel like you could easily put together a battle of the seasons with 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. However, one, that's kind of boring. I don't think that's the most interesting cast to put together. And two, it's like, at that point, it's like, why not just do a general all-star season? As I mentioned before, it's like, I just feel like it's just so much easier to just do a general all-star season than do a battle of the seasons with these specific seasons. But I feel like all these seasons have good amount of contenders. And I did put one of these casts on the cast. I think it really adds like an X factor to the game here in having one of these groups so different from the other. Now, obviously they could just be targeted and be voted out in succession. That would be kind of boring, but it's like, I feel like why not give it a chance. I think it'll be interesting to have like one, like fully newbie cast on the cast, but HHH was not that cast. I feel like it runs into similar issues that some of these other casts have where like, I feel like the big names would turn it down. I don't think Ben is that excited to play again. I don't think Devin wants to play again. At that point, like it feels like a lesser group than what we've 
put together from like the All-Stars and from Micronesia. To me, it definitely does not feel like a group in that same caliber. So because I did not put HHH on. Ghost Island, I really consider. Like obviously we have Dominic and Wendell who I think would both be on. Really, I think there are a bevy of men to put on this casket. And Dominic Wendell and then Donathan, Michael, even a Chris Noble. I think there's good options there. The women is a bit tougher. I think the women, like you got Kellen, but I feel like after that we're kind of stretching. It's like, I mean, Laurel would be okay. Maybe a Dez, but it's like, again, like once we're getting Dez involved, it definitely feels like we are putting together a group that isn't on the same caliber as these other groups. So again, I did not put Ghost Island on. And next up for David vs. Goliath. And I did put David vs. Goliath on. David vs. Goliath is the newbie cast I did end up selecting. Though I do have some hesitancies here, but I, I do think it is the right call to make. Now for me, in terms of the men, it was pretty easy. I think two of the bigger locks here are Davey and Christian. I think you gotta have them. And then at that point, I do feel like we need some challenge strength. So I did go with Dan. I mean, I think you can put in a John Hannigan, but I feel like Dan is a more likely returnee than John Hannigan. So I did go with Dan instead. So I think those are three pretty solid men to bring back. The women was a little bit tougher, not because there weren't enough, but mainly trying to figure out archetype-wise which ones to bring back. I mean, Angelina is a lock. I think Angelina and Gabby really are in two pretty big locks here. The question, who is the third? Again, are we going for challenge strength? And if that's the case, then we go for someone like an Allison. Are we going for a great character? Are we going for a bombastic player? And if that's the case, then we probably go for like someone like an Natalia. I ended up going with Natalie Cole. Again, like I, I just feel like Natalie Cole just feels like the most likely returnee out of the remaining female options. Again, Kara, Allison, Natalia. I do feel like Natalie feels like the most likely returnee out of those four. So I did put Natalie Cole on, which does end up balancing out the Davids and the Goliaths. There's three of each. And again, considering this season is pretty much untapped, like outside of Nick appearing on Winners at War, you don't have anyone else from Davis Goliath returning at this point. So I do feel like Davis Goliath is the right cast to pick here. Now, obviously, I did not end up putting on Edge of Extinction or IOI on, but let's still run through them. Again, Edge of Extinction, I think there's actually a decent group to put together here. I actually really considered Edge of Extinction for a while because I do think men-wise, you got Chris, you got Rick Devins, you got Ron Clark, you got War Dog. Again, four really, really strong returnees there. Again, in terms of the women, you got Lauren, you got Victoria, you get like someone like a Reem. So it's like, I feel like there are a bevy of options here. However, the reason I did not put them on is, again, due to that mentality of wanting only one newbie cast on here at this point, like at the point where I'm having two pretty solid all-star casts on there, I felt like the idea of like having only one newbie cast stemmed from that. And I feel like, at that point, I just feel like the David versus Goliath group is stronger than this one, especially because like people like a Victoria isn't that locked of a returnee. Wentworth doesn't want to come back more than likely. So I think at that point, we would be stretching a little bit. So I did cut Edge of Extinction. And from IOI, I think the problem here is the men. Like while I do think you got Dean and a Jamal maybe, I think at that point we're like kind of stretching to bring back like I guess a Jason would be the next guy to bring back. That being said, there is an incredible female field from this season. Again, you got Nora, you got Lauren, you got Janet, Elaine, Karishma, Kelly, even a Chelsea Walker. Again, there's so many great women from this cast. But for me, it's like the men are kind of eh. And at that point, I just feel like there's better groups to be put together. But for the final cast that did make it on, if, if you can't tell already, I did put on Winners at War. I mean, and a lot of the reason for this is really like once I realized that all-star seasons were going to be in contention, I think I needed to put on Winners at War. To have a winner's tribe, essentially, at that point was something I was fully on board for. Now, that is another reason why I was very hesitant to put Jenna Maraska on the all-star cast because obviously she's the only other winner on the cast and it does feel kind of weird. But again, to get that old school representation there, I decided, you know, we got to put Jenna on. And if you can't tell by me saying that as well, I mean, essentially this Winners at War cast is pretty modern. It's a lot of the more modern winners of the show. As I do feel like those are the ones that are the most likely to return. I mean, to be honest, like, I think the six that I have here as the returnees are, are probably the only six that will see play Survivor again, especially from a context of outside of another Winners at War season. And really, I just feel like this cast came together really easily. I mean, like, I felt like there were six absolute locks off the bat. So for the men, I mean, first up, we got Tyson. I, I think Tyson is, again, one of the few somewhat older school winners that seems to be willing to still return at this point. 
I think he's someone that would return pretty much every opportunity. So I think Tyson's a shoe in for this cast. I think you also got Adam Klein. Yeah, I think Adam Klein at this point is someone that production would love to have back again. And I think he's also someone that would love to come back as well. So Adam made it on. And also we have Wendell. Again, Wendell, another pretty affable figure. I mean, mind you, he did obviously get a bit of a negative edit towards the end of Winners at War. But I still feel like he's in the good favors of production. And is someone that is very much willing to play again. So he made it on. For the women, we got first up Natalie Anderson. Again, obviously made a big name for herself with how she performed on the edge on Winners at War. Plus also just seems willing to play again. I think she needs to be on there. Michelle Fitzgerald, again, another pretty big lock that we'll see again at some point, I think. Again, another one that made a bit of a name for herself on Winners at War. Definitely became a more popular figure from that season. So Michelle made it on. And the last woman here. This one is probably the biggest question mark for me because this person hasn't openly said that they would play again. But I think eventually this person would be willing to do so. So here we do have Sophie Clark. And I... I know Sophie's talked about how she wanted to take a break a bit, but I do think eventually down the road she'd be willing to play again. And again, after what we saw from her in Winners at War, I think she has a lot of potential, so I easily put her on this cast as well. So there we go. That is my cast for Survivor Battle of the Seasons. Again, ideally, I would like there to be all newbie casts, but I just don't feel like there are enough to really fit the theme and do so in a way that really makes sense for them to do it. I might do a dream casting version of this video down the road. And I think that might be a bit fun. But for now, this is the cast for Survivor Battle of the Seasons. From the all-star tribe, we do have Jenna Lewis. We have Rupert Bonham, Lex Vanderberg, Jerry Manthe, Colby Donaldson, and Jenna Maraska. From the Micronesia tribe, we have Amanda Kimmel. We have Sri Fields. We have Natalie Bolton. We have Eric Reichenbach. We have Ozzy Lutz. And we have Jonathan Penner. From the David vs. Goliath tribe, we have Angelina, we have Davey Rickenbacker, we have Christian Hubicki, we have Gabby Petscusi, we have Dan Rengering, and we have Natalie Cole. And from Survivor, Winners at War, we have Natalie Anderson, we have Michelle Fitzgerald, we have Sophie Clark, we have Tyson Apostle, we have Adam Klein, and we have Wendell Holland. So that is my cast for Survivor Battle of the seasons. But yeah, I mean, I know the casting videos have slowed down on this channel to me as a lot of the more popular ideas have already been run through, but I did think Battle of the Seasons was a fun enough idea that I wanted to give a shot at seeing what a cast with that theme would look like. So there we go. But yeah, that is the video. That is my cast for Battle of the Seasons. Thank you for watching.